Mercenary for Justice is the Steven Seagal movie where he finally showed the world that if you just look past his lack of talent, effort, and quality, that he's still just the fucking worst. No, this time is different. It's really not. We first see Seagal doing what he does best, shooting what he can't see, and speaking with someone else's voice. Get head office on the secure line. He thinks he's liberating a country, but he's actually stealing diamonds and oil for these two guys. That they're risking their lives so that we can get rich off of diamonds and oil. While that might sound stupid and nonsensical, they can't even spell black ops right. So what the f do you expect? Seagal, the most decorated soldier in the first Gulf War, is the leader of this group of mercenaries who in the middle of a battle just leave so they can take the French ambassador's family hostage. I'm the French ambassador. For reasons that are very poorly explained, but also don't matter because it fails miserably and the entire family is killed. This seems important, but somehow it never comes up again and has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. Even though they're in an active gunfight, none of them seem to realize it. She marches across the battlefield to give Seagal a piece of her mind. Never learn, will you? I swear to God, women will pick a fight anywhere. Another CIA you, isn't it? While she's doing that, her cameraman is getting fucking annihilated. Asshole! This is Seagal's best friend who just stands out in the open. I should have dragged you into this, John. They bitching instead of fighting. And then, when they try to evac, they spend a ridiculous amount of time arguing outside the helicopter. You know, mommy throwing a grenade up in his helicopter. Instead of just getting the f out of there. Forget about it. Because of that stupid sh they're on a tight schedule and don't have time to wait for Seagal to waddle run this short distance. So they say f it and take his body double instead. It turns out, sending 10 guys to take on an entire army is really fucking stupid. To be fair, that army was French. So stand the f down. But still. Everyone stand down. So Seagal visits his dead friend's family to tell them how stupidly he died. After spending some time hitting on his best friend's widow, he then sees an SUV out the window, and since he's a fucking psycho, he makes his body double, jumps some walls, while he teleports behind them and just executes them. We never get a clear answer on what the fuck that was, and Seagal then gets kidnapped by his own crew. They bring him to the black OPP guy who will kill Seagal's friend's family. Please, John, don't let them hurt my baby. If he doesn't help break a billionaire son out of prison in South Africa. At the most secure facility in Randville. They're also taking that family to South Africa. They say they're going to take us to Africa. Talk about convenient. Now the CIA guy really needs to find OPP for reasons that are never explained. I want to search for the high-end hotels in Miami. And since the writing in this movie is total shit, he just happens to see one of Seagal's crew at that exact moment. Never mind. He just walks up, steals her briefcase, and tells her she works for him now. You work for me now. She agrees, even though she doesn't know who the f he is. Sorry, have we met before? Oh, we partied on the same island once. What the hell does that mean? Seagal's plane lands in South Africa and must have had a big and tall store because Seagal comes out wearing a completely different outfit. 
that leads to a crazy Home Alone mix-up where they leave Seagal at the airport and end up taking this guy along by mistake. And nobody notices for three whole scenes. Seagal takes an Uber, and now they go over the mission. Desan Jr. is being kept at the most secure facility in Ranville. There is no way that f***ed up building is the most secure anything. So this is what's going to happen. So Seagal tells them his dumb plan. There's going to be a shift change. Because of the large number of guards, they're disabling their alarm system. It's nice the alarm system is off for a couple minutes, but there's twice as many guards, you f***ing moron but that somehow only the second dumbest plan at the table why don't we use nerve gas on these pussies you know you've crossed a line when you say something so stupid not even Seagal can believe it with nerve gas we're quite afraid that we may kill everybody especially our boy for daring to outdumb him in his own movie Seagal decides to kick his ass you want to dance mother but he's also tired from all the walking his body double did. So he makes John Kreese and Paul Walker's love child come to him and gives us his best fight scene in the last 10 years. Get up! I think it's much better. I thought Seagal was a goner when Paul Creaser pulled out the old stick your arm out next to him move. But Seagal doesn't call himself the great one for nothing. They forget to finish their plan, but nobody notices because this movie's fucking stupid. All right. Now we're back with them and she lies and tells her pimp that Seagal's crew's black op is a bank robbery. This is absurd. Totally absurd. Yes, everything about this is fucking absurd. Even this memo with a badly photoshopped CIA logo and the worst letter spacing I have ever seen. But it's a Seagal movie where everyone's dumb as shit. So the police chief goes along with it. Well, let's sign you in. And gives them a tour while explaining all the security measures. The doors a titanium vanadium alloy. And how to beat them. The vault itself is opened only with two magnetic strip keys. OPP finds out she's secretly working for him and wants her killed. We do need to do something about her. What? Who's going to do it? I'll do it. Well done. Well done? He hasn't even done anything yet. Nothing about this scene makes any f sense. So Seagal goes to kill her, but gets hungry, and they make a quick stop at the fanciest buffet in town. But he's really feeling those burritos from earlier, and after destroying the bathroom for a good 30 minutes, they send security in to check on him and find that he's standing on the fucking toilet. Worried that security's going to alert the tabloids to whatever this weird shit is that he's into, he beats the living fuck out of him in such a vicious way that you'll question if he's ever actually seen a punch before. <laughs> then the scene ends with them dancing while she vows to fire her fucking agent. Now the CIA guy just decides out of nowhere. Motherfucker's hitting the bank. He's hitting the bank right now. I want every cop in this godforsaken place at that bank right now. They're not. They're actually at the prison slaughtering all the innocent guards. <laughs> But that was a setup too, and the guy they're looking for isn't there. Where is he? No fucking idea. The movie never tells us, and we don't care enough to try and make any sense of it. They don't even notice that Seagal's not with them. They probably thought one of these guys who've literally never been seen in the movie before right now was one of his body doubles. <laughs> Luckily, they all die, and this show is one step closer to being over. 
Now, CIA guy decides they're going to hit the prison. It's a diversion. They hit him right fell prison. Only they already hit the prison and it wasn't a diversion because there was no reason to think they were at the bank in the first place. That's a fucking ghost. No, you're just fucking stupid. Why the fuck are you people even listening to him? Now, they really are going after the bank and holy shit, the only thing dumber than Seagal's plan are the employees. As you know, we've received some credible intel that there's a bomb threat here. I don't know what their procedure is in a bomb threat, but you usually evacuate. You don't rush towards the bomb. But whatever, the rest of Seagal's elaborate Ocean's Eleven style heist is to just use this magic box to bypass everything. His reason for hitting the bank was to threaten to drain the account of a general out of Greece if he doesn't arrest the billionaire who hired OPP. Get me the army chief of staff. Yes. Bullshit. I don't know why he uses a bank in South Africa and that billionaire doesn't even know who Seagal is, so I don't know what the point of any of this was. Asshole alert. It was probably just an excuse to do what he loves most, slaughter innocent people. <laughs> and shoot before he's even aiming. After creating many orphans and widows, <laughs> Seagal recognizes CIA guy as also being responsible for unnecessary deaths and spares him out of professional courtesy. Seagal deposited $32 million into CIA guy's account so they arrest him. You, Mr. Dresham, are under arrest. Even though the police chief witnessed everything, their surveillance video, and he was knocked the fuck out they're not fooled by any of that they got their man which is great because now this terrible fucking movie is finally over wait a minute now we got unfinished business god damn it i was hoping he'd forget about them they somehow know exactly where they're at and head straight there while everyone else is wearing the exact same clothes seagal says continuity i'm wearing whatever the fuck i want i don't even know why they're still hostages at this point but while everyone else is sneaking around killing the captors one by one this guy gives zero fucks and alerts the entire neighborhood but the bad guys on the interior are so goddamn stupid that it doesn't even matter this guy freaks out because the kid hugs his mom, which he perceives as a threat. Let yeah! him go or I'll kill him right here, right now. This guy is just standing in the middle of a fucking hallway. <laughs> Great job, dipshit. So Seagal frees them <laughs> and finally confronts OPP, Seagal then does the best acting of his career. You have a gun. That's so inspirational that OPP decides to let him live. Except Seagal's a dickhead and blows him up. When Seagal was able to plant the explosive is never explained, but f it, nobody cares. We're just glad this travesty is finally over.